Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia but you can call me Crafty Owl. In today's video I'm going to be using the brand new large die of the month from Spellbinders to try and make my very first pop-up card. I hope you'll stick around and see if I can make it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, I get a few of the Spellbinders kits to try out and share here on my channel. Earlier this month, I shared a card using the new Stitch Die of the Month. I have a picture up on screen now. While it was a little time consuming, I love how it turned out. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will have it linked in the description box below and as an end card at the end of this video. Later in the month, I will be back to share some projects using the new Quick and Easy Card Kit of the Month. But like I mentioned in the intro today, I'm going to be using the large die of the month for March 2023, which is called Flowering Tree and Collapsible Card Base. This month's large die of the month contains 16 dies and helps you create a pop-up or collapsible card. Now it does come with some sentiment dies to read happy birthday, but I thought for my needs a thank you card might be a little bit more appreciated so I will be using the coordinating die set flowering tree sentiments and using thank you now I have never made one of these before but on the back of the insert you'll get with your kit it does give you the instructions on how to put it together so let's cross our fingers and see if I can get this done as I add more products and tools during the process, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Since today's card will require lots of different cardstock colors, I thought I would choose which ones I was going to use by picking a card from my new color cubes. I talked about these more in a recent live, which I will link the replay below, but basically they're little cards with pictures that have great color combos on them. Since I used a color cube card from box two during that live, I thought for today's video I would pick something out of box one. Each of the cards is numbered and box one contains cards one through 250. So I just grabbed a little stack from the front and started going through them. I knew that I wanted some kind of green for the leaves and the grass and some kind of brown for the tree trunk. And since I am feeling like it needs to be spring, I wanted some brighter colors for the flowers. So card number six did the trick for this. Now to figure out which cardstocks I wanted to grab from my stash, I brought in my cardstock swatch ring and I held them up to the colors on the card. I just made this recently because I have acquired some Tailored Expressions cardstock. So on the ring, the Tailored Expressions cardstock has the more angled cuts at the top and the Gina K cardstock has all rounded edges. I held the cardstocks up to the card trying to find the best match now I won't have a perfect one, but I do just try to find kind of the same shade or tone. Not real exact what the correct word is. So once I had figured out which I wanted to grab for each, I did write that down so I didn't have to pick one, go grab it, come back, pick another, go grab it. I just made this list and then went and shopped my stash. All the browns I have are just some from my stash that aren't Tailored Expressions or Gina K. So I grabbed a couple shades of brown off camera and here's a look at my final pieces that I picked out for my card. 
Now it's time to pull out the large die of the month and start cutting up that cardstock. Like I mentioned before, I'm just going to follow the instructions on the back. To get started, I'm going to cut two of that largest die from a piece of white cardstock and then each of the sides from the green. I grabbed a slightly larger piece of green for the next die and I needed to cut three of those because it is going to be the pieces that make the different layers on the front of the card. Per the instructions, you need to cut down a couple of these green pieces, but because I wanted to use these decorative scissors to get kind of a grass feel at the top of each piece, I cut a little bit off the large one, and then I used the same scissors and cut at the lines for the smaller two. I thought that this added a little bit of extra texture and fun. Let me know in the comments if you still use decorative scissors. The next step was to get the side panels added to the backer. And to do this, there are some perforated tabs that fold back. And all you do is put glue on there and fold it and then line it up with the edges of the card. Now I use liquid glue so I had some wiggle room. And once both of those sides were in place, I brought in a couple clear stamp blocks and I let this dry for about five minutes. While that was drying, I brought in the second copy of the white backer, and I'm going to turn this into a cloudy sky. To do this, I brought in a cloud edger stencil, a light blue ink, and my blending brush. And I would just keep kind of like rotating and flipping the cloud stencil as I went from top to bottom. Again, I just thought having a little sky in the background would be nice for the tree. Now I want to get my sky added to the card, but because it's the same width as the backer, the side pieces won't fold in completely. So I took this off camera and shaved just a little bit off each edge. There will be a small white border in some places, but later I kind of use that same blending brush and turn that a little bit blue. For this next step, I did have to watch a few YouTube videos to get some great tips. I think the most helpful was from Jennifer McGuire. She showed how to put this together pretty easily. I will link her video in the description box below so you can go check it out, but I will show you my process quickly. While I work on that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions I like to ask from time to time so we can get to know each other a little bit better. Today has to do with this kind of card I am making. Now I've heard people call it pop-up, the die set is called collapsible, so whatever you call it, have you ever made a similar card like this? Let me know in the comment section below and make sure to add the hashtag hashtag QOTV so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. For myself, like I have mentioned, this is my very first time doing something exactly like this and it will not be my last. I cannot wait to hear about your experience. One of the neatest things about this card is even though it's kind of big and fun when it's open, it still folds to fit in an A2 envelope. Now it's time for some more die cutting. This is going to be for the tree and the leaves. So I pulled out the leaf dies and brought in my scraps of green. And then for the tree, I wasn't quite sure yet which brown I wanted to use. So I brought them both in and decided to hold them up to the card so far. I thought the chocolate was a little bit too dark. I thought the craft looked brighter and springier for the card. So I cut two of the trees from that and off camera I glued those together just for some more stability. Now I was going to show you how I put on the leaves here, but my camera decided that it wanted to get fuzzy. Now it does improve here in a little bit, but I'm just going to skip this for now. And when I put on the flowers, you'll kind of see the process that I used. And speaking of the flowers, that's what I die cut next. I used the red and the pink. And then once everything was die cut, I just used some liquid glue and I would dot a little bit on the area I was going to place my flower. And for these larger ones, I just use my fingers to put those in place. 
if the flower was going to overlap any part of a leaf I put a little liquid glue on top of that also and sometimes the flowers had to be rotated just so they matched the craft tree beneath it but this was just something I could do while I caught up on some of my TV shows now after that was dry you'll see here it was finished I originally cut the little dots in the center out of red you'll see there on the side and I needed them from pink and also I think I might have cut too many pink and put them on the wrong flowers I was trying to go by what the little picture said and I think some of those had gems in the middle and maybe not the die cut cardstock pieces but in the end I thought it turned out pretty cute now all of the pieces are ready so we can get this card put together off screen I cut two copies of each of the sentiment words in red cardstock and adhered those together just like with the tree to add a little bit more stability. Then I started putting the tree and the words onto the grass strips. Now this was probably the most difficult kind of figuring out where you wanted that to go and then getting it held in place until the liquid glue stuck. But overall I would say this card was pretty easy especially for a first timer like me. Once everything was in place, I let it set for about five minutes to dry completely. And here are some close up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed tagging along as I made my very first pop-up card. I have to say that I am in love with the way it looks and I can't wait to make my next one. I even think with the kind of the basics, you wouldn't even have to use the tree. You could make your own scene with other stamps and dies you already have. So this would be a great basic to get you started. I will link the large die of the month club kit and this add-on in the description box below if you're interested in checking them out. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.